Okay, hi guys, welcome back to another review on the Audio Levels channel and today we are taking a look at this, the Tangim, or Tangim, um, Prism IEMs. Before we get into that one, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, please go ahead and subscribe. And if you like the video, please go ahead and like it at the end. It really, really helps the channel out, as I'm sure you've heard many people say before. Uh, but what do subscribers get? Subscribers on this channel are free to ask for any uh, comparative video reviews. If you want to see one headphone go against another headphone, I do this all the time. I grab just a handful of earphones that I have at the background there. I have a lot of earphones, so you can always ask for uh, this one versus this one. Big shootouts. I do a lot of these shootout videos, and if it's popular enough, we're going to go ahead and do that. If not, I'll just answer your questions down in the comment section. That's the other thing. Subscribers, you can leave your, um, your current equipment, how much you're thinking of spending, and the type of genres that you uh, usually listen to. And I'll try and give you a recommendation based on what I've heard and what I know and my sort of listening style. So if you like earphones that I like, there's a good chance that you're gonna like some of the ones that I recommend for you as well. So that's another reason to subscribe, but the big one this month to subscribe to is that we're giving away all the AdSense revenue from last month. Now I know people think YouTubers make a lot of money. I don't really do this for a job, so I don't really care about the uh, AdSense money. I have monetized the channel, but I'm gonna give away the revenue from last month, which was well under $100. So I'm gonna to top it up myself up to $100. I'm gonna give away a Linso voucher for $100 to one of my subscribers. Um, the reason I'm going with Linsol is just that we have a lot of people on this channel who are subscribed and they, they, they might not be in an Amazon area. I would like to give away an Amazon voucher uh, technically, but I think more people uh, have the chance to get something if it's through Linsol and they do um, you know, the international shipping. Linsol haven't given me the voucher, but I'm just buying the voucher from them myself and I'll give you the code through email or something like that. So good reasons to subscribe. And the other reason to subscribe and the final one is the awesome content and all the earphones we have. And today it is, as I say, the Tangium Prism. Uh, Tangium is starting to be known as a bit of a player in the earphone space. They, they have a uh, a few earphones like the Hana and stuff that have been really received quite well. And this one is a, a very, very nice earphone with some caveats. So let's get fully into this. I've already uh, got the box lying everywhere. Uh, I'm not very good at putting the boxes back together. I've had this for like a week and I ripped the box open, make a mess everywhere. So uh, this is the outer sleeve. It's very nicely presented. The packaging with this is some of the best I've seen. It's super classy. I really, really like the way they've presented this earphone. It gives you that special feeling. I'm sure you know this. If you're gonna spend this much money on an earphone, you want it to feel special. You want to enjoy the experience. And this gives you, um, it's not something I would pay more for, but it's like, you know, it feels good. Like when you're, you're unboxing it, you feel excited. Uh, on the back, you get the frequency ga graph, which I don't 100% agree with, but we'll talk about that in the sound settings, but nice presentation there. But when you get into the main box, which is this one here, it's super high quality, classy. It's got this little print on the outside, which seems to be the Tangium styling. Um, it's just a classy, classy presentation. When you open that up, you're then faced with this in a sleeve. You pull it out the sleeve. You have the instruction manual, warranty card, and a little Tangium branded cleaning cloth. Um, so that's nice. And I just like the way that they present it. Then on the inside of this box itself, which these ones are always a nightmare to open on camera. Um, you get, let's see if I can actually put it back together so you sort of see what I got. Uh, I got the cable around there and the earphones in the inside there. So it comes presented like that, obviously a lot nicer than that, but um, the presentation is, gives it a little bit of the wow factor. When I opened this up and I saw it, I was like, whoa, that, that looks um, expensive. And I think that's what you want to see when you spend $600 on earphones. Underneath, you get the carry case. A uh, carry case sits in here and you just, the, the only thing that I would say in a criticism with the packaging and accessories is you only effectively get two sets of ear tips. Two sets, I mean, uh, I was using the medium tips. I, they're fantastic ear tips themselves in their own right. Very easy to get a seal with. And they, they have a sort of shallow medium depth insertation, these, these earphones. 
and uh, so sometimes you might struggle with grip but with these ear tips i found i get a really good grip the only issue is this and this are the only ear tips that you get in total so effectively if you're just using the medium you have one set and two sets these are irrelevant to have um i would have liked to have seen them throw in maybe some cheaper silicone tips a comply tip and maybe some final audio tips just so you have options and varieties like if you lose an ear if you lose one of these ear tips then you have to go and buy more ear tips essentially um the difference between these are this is a treble enhancing one and this is a bass enhancing one and this is one of these earphones where you do hear that difference but it's not in terms of this is treble enhancing and this is bass enhancing this is more bass like a punchier bass and this is a little bit of a smoother bass that's where i'm getting it. i'm not getting the treble uh, differences um so you see on the back it says treble extending and the other one says um, bass enhancing uh, the only difference like in how they achieve that sort of performance is that this one has a wide bore you can see that the diameter in there is a lot wider than this one and with a dynamic driver earphone which is moving a lot of air uh, that ear is being compressed through the channel so you get this impression of a, a punchier sort of bass and it is punchier it's not like a deeper rumble or anything like it just is more impactful the case is fantastic bar a caveat or bar a couple of caveats um it's beautiful looking it is a hard case despite appearing like a soft case i can press until my fingers go white um this is a beautiful looking case it's got the tantrum styling that you see on the outside of the box and inside the earphones themselves uh, and yeah it's just really nice criticism it's not going to stay white for long obviously white cases are going to scuff up and get dirty um but it is a nice case on the inside i I kind of like I like how this says Tantrum Home, uh, somewhere to keep your earphones. You put the cable in here essentially, and then you put the 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 two earphones into drop it into one of these, and you keep it separate. I wouldn't advise anybody to do that, and the reason I advise people not to do that is because on two pin connector earphones, you have let me grab the the audio cable here just to illustrate. Uh, you have the two pin connectors there, and they are prone to bending. Uh, in fact, I'll bring in the tantrum cable because we're just about to talk about it. These um, prongs that are coming out for the 2-pin are far longer than I've ever seen on another um, cable. Uh, for example, here is the, the prongs on the uh, side-by-side. -side. This is the, uh, the audio cable. This is the tantrum. Significantly longer uh, prongs on the 2-pin connector. And that, that makes it prone to bending, like if you're not careful. So I wouldn't be taking the earphones apart to put them in the case. I'd just put them in all in one place. Just watch out for that. I've had two pin connectors bend on me in the past. Not to say these will, but um, if you're not paying attention, you try and push them into the ear tips, that can happen. Let's put the case off to one side and talk about the cable. The cable wowed me. Uh, the cable, I'm, I'm so used now to braided cables and all these uh, gorgeous cables um that when i opened the box i looked at it i was kind of like i was like oh it's a good looking cable but i was like it's single strand uh, you know the braiding all happens behind a, a sheathing um but if you watch this oh it, it just sits perfectly it's such a well-behaved cable um much better than the rats rat's nest that is the campfire audio cables which are cost hundreds of dollars uh, that performs beautifully and actually when it doesn't retain as much memory as I thought it was going to um, it's reasonably flowy for this style of cable uh, and it's lightweight it's well made I really really like it but we'll get into something else one of the omissions from this earphone that kind of irked me a little bit was it just comes with a standard 3.5 millimeter cable and I think at this price point especially in a hybrid people are going to be using um balanced sources most most people that are spending six hundred dollars have got a source now i would say um and it might not always be a balanced source it, but you know most people are using external sources or some sort of amplification or something and we're leaning towards a market that is going towards balanced armature there's uh, not balanced armature sorry balanced outputs there's balanced outputs on almost every dap and dac that i own at this point the balanced 4.4 on the shanling um 
another Shanling balance day, 4.4 and I believe a 2.5. Uh, the Thonry comes with a 4.4 as well. So I don't understand them not including, I, I would have liked to have seen the standard, a 2.5 millimeter balanced and then come with a couple of jack adapters. Uh, the audio earphones come with jack adapters. Uh, let's grab that, that's a the audio case. You see, it's as simple as adding in a couple of things like that and you can convert your earphones to uh, balanced and you can use them as normal with your laptop and then flip back and I just don't understand an earphone at this price targeting the type of people like audiophiles that um, are going to be buying these that you wouldn't include a balanced. Uh, so if it was me, I'd probably buy a balanced cable to be honest or um, yeah, which one would I recommend? It's probably too heavy. Uh, yeah, something like the, the Linsole, um, the Linsole Euphrosian. I'll leave a link to that in the description. I think it's, uh, I don't know, it's sub $100. I'll leave a link down below. You can check that cable out. If you're looking for a cable, that is awesome cable, under $100. Um, so yeah, that, um, apart from that, it's all metal hardware, um, metal uh, jack point, little strain relief, no braiding to talk about, uh, metal prism branded splitter, uh, goes into a slightly thinner strand afterwards, but then they do this. They vajazzled my earphones again, just like they did with the TFZ My Love. They vajazzled it. They've put diamonds on it. Um, I don't particularly think that looks classy, I, but I don't think it looks bad in this context. You barely even notice it, um, but it is there, and it is a vajazzling on your earphones. So, um, Classy or tacky, which one do you want to say? Um, this is an ear loop, um, pretty standard, fits comfortably behind the ear, and then you have these rather long two pin connectors, but I do like that they've used a recess uh, on the ear tips themselves. So you see here that there's a little recess where the, the earphones attach, and that gives you a little bit of extra security. You know, it locks in tighter, uh, and it stops the pins from basically being able to move. I just prefer either a recess or a QDC standard. Um, let's talk about the earphones themselves. Let's wrap this very nice cable up and because I do like doing this. Um, I know this is a thing for me, but you probably see it in other videos. I just like how it wraps up and it doesn't tangle. Very nice. Uh, the earphones themselves, gorgeous looking and a refreshing departure from um, the the trend of just resin body after resin body after resin body. Uh, it's nice to see metal uh, making a comeback again. Uh, I always enjoy a metal earphone. I do prefer metal or ceramics over the resin bodies. I do like the resin bodies. There's really nothing wrong with something like this, which is the The Audio Excalibur. Uh, I, I do like that. But I just think durability wise, that is a tank. That is a tank of an earphone and it's deceptively heavy as well. Um, you're lucky these go over the ears because these are quite a weighty earphone. Now, in terms of the outside, you just have tasteful branding, little uh, etch tantrum on that side and prism on the other side. They are kind of fingerprint magnets, but you can see this prism design with the, the printed design that was on the box there as well. Uh, you have some venting for the dynamic drive on the outside and you have right and left indicators. There is a lip on the nozzle which is going to prevent your ear tips from coming off and there is of course metal uh, grills on it to protect from dirt getting inside it. Uh, on the inside is where things get even more interesting. On this earphone, um, Tantium have gone with a hybrid design and with the hybrid design they have gone with a dynamic driver and two Sonian balanced armatures. For those of you new to audio and stuff like that, let me give you a quick breakdown of why companies do hybrid and tribrid earphones. Basically a hybrid is when they use two different driver technologies to create um, an overall more cohesive sound than you would get with one driver. The advantage, uh, all driver types have their advantages and disadvantages. Typically dynamic drivers are not as fast as uh, a balanced armature, so they're not able to produce as much detail, but then conversely a balanced armature is struggles to create that real sense of true bass because it's not able to move the same amount of volume of air. By creating a hybrid earphone, you're taking 
the best of both worlds. So for this, like you would have the dynamic driver handling the low end of the spectrum uh, and creating that realistic weight behind a, a base note. Uh, and then you get the highs and the mids are handled by the balanced armatures and the, those balanced armatures are super fast and uh, that creates a lot of detail in the sound. Um, the other step that you can take it to is like with the Theodio Oracle and Excalibur uh, Roland uh, from Fearless Audio um, and the Non from Canera. Uh, they're all tri earphones so they add another level by putting an EST driver, electrostatic driver at the top. This is competing directly against um, the Excalibur and the Oracle which um, are gold standards at $500 ish uh, and then it sits between just below the Monarch and the Clairvoyance which are also gold standards at that price point so th they're in a very competitive price point um, in this one the the, the kind of tackle that lack of the EST driver by using very high quality drivers in their own right this is using Sonian um, balanced armatures like very good Sonian balanced armature um, units in combination with a very special dynamic driver that I believe is a DMT carbon nanotube technology coated uh, driver. The reason that you you coat your driver is basically to add more rigidity over the entire circumference of the uh, of the driver panel, uh, so that it retains more rigidity. It can produce more detail. But there's something else going on here. Uh, they have a acoustic chamber on the inside that I believe catches the reflections from internally. Now a lot of earphones are guilty of just building it by throwing in the uh, the drivers into the casing and just you know putting a bore tube where the, the sound comes out but there is infractions there's the um, de deflections that's happening in the sound inside the, those tubes and inside the driver. This apparently uses something that catches the notes from the reflection so you're just getting the sound driven out forward so it cuts down on distortion. Um, you can definitely hear something is different in the imaging and sound stage on these. It is a very very good uh, imaging earphone. Um, the the overall tuning of it is extremely v-shaped the the bass is enhanced and the treble is enhanced um the bass is not enhanced in terms of let's say like pure sub bass quantity i think people make the mistake of thinking that when you somebody says bass enhanced it's very bassy it's it's, it's just a more overall quantity to the bass but where it does do something really really cool is the, it seems like there's overlap again. I've been talking about this recently. There's overlap in the mid bass range from the dynamic driver to the um, to the the balanced armatures. Usually that happens at the point where a company will tune. Okay, the dynamic driver handles all the bass frequencies, and then the balanced armatures handle everything above that. This it seems like they've brought the balanced armatures into the bass region a little bit, and that creates a lot of detail in the mid bass. And that's where I believe that a lot of people hear these things where you go, oh, I'm hearing details I've never heard before. If you can get that sort of balance of a dynamic driver overlapping with a balanced armature at the right point, you're going to get all the details that you might be missing from the, um, the mid-bass. Mid-bass is one of these ones where if the dynamic driver handles it, you can be prone to losing out a little bit of detail. And there's a lot of detail in bass. People think too much in terms of overall slam and stuff but if you're talking about the the textures and the layering and the bass uh, especially in terms of jazz and um, instrumental orchestral type music and uh, you can really 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 hear like a lot of texture in the bass even rock music like when you're hearing the double bass go you can hear the resonance of the strings a lot clearer if there's a good mid bass representation um, the mid range sits back um, not back, I'm not going to say back. Here's how the mid-range actually sounds on this. The mid-range is fantastic. When you isolate it and you look at the mid-range itself, it is detailed, it is clear, it is excellent. But they have pushed the bass and they have pushed the treble to create this V-shape and it gives the, imp the impression that the mid-bass is back. I think that's a wrong interpretation. The mid-bass is not pushed back. 
it's the other two um, frequencies are pushed forward so it appears like it's sitting back but there is nothing wrong with the mid bass if you brought that um the the bass down and the treble down the mid range it sounds fantastic in its own right um isolating it on certain tracks acoustic tracks Sunga Jun, um uh, rodrigo y gabriela and stuff like that absolutely fantastic um it's just that it's going to sit quite a bit further back which means vocals will sound a little bit too compressed and um, it, certainly male vocals uh, that it starts to re-peak up towards the upper mids and treble so female vocals are going to definitely perform better on this um in terms of treble the treble extension is pushed quite uh, aggressively it's not sibilant but it's definitely something if you're coming from a smoother more laid back earphone that you're going to need a few days to get used to this. Uh, if you're already somebody like me that likes treble, you can appreciate this one, but it does have that sort of BA metallic twin uh, tinge, where I think that the ESTs uh, round that off a little bit better. Um, it is definitely V-shaped though. So that's going to make it good for um, EDM style music, um, where you've got those um, peaking highs where it goes da -da 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 into the, the bass drop, you know, when it builds on the treble and then drops into a bass slam. Uh, it sounds really, really good for EDM music. Not so much for mid-range music like rock and uh, stuff like that. It really needs to be considered as a V-shaped earphone. Um, it's It sounds overall, the, the, the thing that catches you though is this imaging and sound space. The sound space is wide, but it's also deep, and that's something that you really don't get a lot of in earphones. Um, it's very easy to create width in an earphone if you want to create it, because it's essentially coming from each side of your head, so it sound you can make it the sound move further out this way, but then to wrap that sound around in front and then push it out is definitely something different. And this does it really, really well. I think it does it in the perceived sense of the extended treble response. The extended treble response uh, create, has an, an illusionary effect of creating a um, a deeper, a, a larger overall sound stage rather than a deeper one. But the way they've managed to create this, there's some depth to it, which sounds fantastic in live recordings, especially like um, jazz recordings, uh, Diana Krall. It feels like she's in front of you instead of coming out the sides of your ears. Uh, that sounds fantastic and the imaging, the ability to place um, instrumentation clearly and distinctly separate instrumentation is fantastic on these as well. Um, so I think it's a very, very good earphone. The caveat here is, is the price really going to go up against um, against the tribrids? Uh, you know, the tribrids, we have Zen's Up, we have Shure EJ M07, you have the Audio Oracle, the Audio... Uh, Excalibur, Monarch, <laughs> Clairvoyance, you have a lot of good, good, good earphones that are doing a EST-112 and I think this is maybe just $100 too expensive, just, I, I think it's there, I think it's right there, I think it's fantastic, I love the way that the, the mid bass um, represents and creates that detail and then the combination of the, the extended treble creating that sound space. I think it is a, a unique and interesting sounding earphone that is overall a very, very nice package and very well built. I think that is like, you know, if this was your daily, that's a handsome looking little set right there, the iVaso DX300 uh, with the Tangium uh, Prism. So anyway, that's going to be it for this review. I am going to do direct comparisons uh, in the coming weeks, so subscribe to that. I'm going to directly compare that against the Oracle and the Excalibur uh, and any other earphones that I kind of really like at this price point. Where are those Rhapsodio RX10s? Are they in here somewhere? If you bear with me a second, I have a lot of earphones. There we go. No, that's not it. Uh, I have a set called the Rhapsodio RX10, these things. These are also in these prices, these are so overlooked, um, but they're mammoths, uh, they're absolutely huge. They're not perfect, but these are special. Uh, another one that creates this uh, crazy uh, soundstage and spacing. Um, so I'm gonna give all those ones direct head-to-head -head comparisons so you can get an idea of where they stand in relation to other ones. So 
If you liked this video and you made it this long, please go ahead and subscribe. Uh, as always, links to my favorite stuff is going to be down below in the description. And uh, yeah, if you want to see this compared against something that you've got in mind, please go ahead and make that recommendation down below. And I will see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.